how much do we slander other people? How much do we gossip about other people? It's wrong. And it shouldn't happen. But it's so easy. I have to admit, I met up with Pastor, I never met Pastor Kenny. He's taken over for what my wife used to do at Philippi. And, you know, we, I just wanted to catch up on people. And without even realizing it, suddenly I was saying, well, is this person still immature? Is this person? That, that doesn't help people. And, and I didn't even realize, you know, you just, you go from this awesome praise and worship and being able to glorify God to just, you know, well, is this person, have they grown? Is this person still bad? And I shouldn't be speaking that way. I should be talking to Kenny and saying, I bet God's continuing to grow that person. Do you hear just the power in that? Rather than just the evil of, oh, man, is that person still a loser? I didn't say that, but, you know. Um, do we really go around and speak powerfully to people? Our tongues are, according to James, I mean, set on fire by hell. How much hell has happened in your life because of words? You walked around the corner and somebody was talking about you. Or they walked around the corner while you were talking about them. And then you have to lie. Well, I didn't really mean it that way, or I wasn't really trying. Yes, you were. Let, let's not make it worse. You were saying it. What did Jesus say? Out of the abundance of a man's heart, his mouth speaks. I think that verse is in here. I don't know. It's not. It's in the Bible. Um, <laughs> verse 9. Choosing wise words. Or point 9. Choosing wise words is important in communicating a message. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12. By the way, one of my favorite books of the Bible. Next time you have a retreat, I'll come to Ecclesiastes for you. If you give me 12 sessions. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, anyway. Um, it, <laughs> It says, uh, the preacher who was Solomon sought to find words of delight, and uprightly he wrote words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads and like nails, firmly fixed with the collected sayings they are given by one shepherd. He says, you know what, I wanted to communicate well, and so I really studied to try to find the best words to communicate. Can I challenge you to think through your words? Try to pick strong words, because if you choose good words, you will accomplish a message. I, uh, chose a very bad word when I was preaching a couple of weeks ago. I picked up the word freaking, which to me just means it's like very freaky. And um, I had, sorry, this shows my ignorance. I did not realize that freaking is apparently a euphemism for the F word. And so I was in the middle of the sermon and I said, so if there's like, you know, this freaking idea that we need to do something or another, I had five people come up to me and say, you said the F word. I said, no, I didn't. They said, that's what that means. And I was like, you're kidding me. And so I had the whole church thinking the pastor was cussing. And it was, I mean, I guess I was. And what I, it was so frustrating because in the split second, and as soon as I said it, I knew I probably should have chosen a better word. Uh, I didn't know that it was the F word, but like, I, it just, I chose a poor word. And people for the rest of my sermon didn't hear. It was a good sermon. They needed to hear it. But that one word undermined everything that I said. And I just challenge you to be very careful and choose good words to communicate. Take your Bibles to 2 Samuel 16. This is fun. This is really fun. David's life was saved, well, because God saved it, and because this guy chose really cool words. This is the story of Hushai and Ahithophel. Anybody know about Hushai and Ahithophel? Yeah, you probably didn't know this story, but it's perfect, all right? Hushai and Ahithophel. Now here's what you got to know. There's some background here. Ahithophel, let me see. Let me make sure I get them right. Um, 16, 23, and following. Ahithophel was one of the wisest men of the time, okay? And you're going to see this in 16, uh, 2 Samuel 16, 23. Now, in those days, the counsel of Ahithophel, Ahithophel gave, was as if one consulted the word of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel esteemed, both by David and and by Absalom. When Ahithophel spoke, it was like God spoke. This guy was one wise dude. Okay? Here's what had happened. David had slept with Ahithophel's granddaughter. Okay? Her name was Bathsheba. And then he killed her husband. Uh, granddads don't forget it when you uh, sleep with their daughter. Alright? You might just want to file that one away. Okay? So, when... Um, <laughs> don't sleep with a girl and expect your granddad to buy you a present. Uh, that's what had happened. David obviously didn't seem to realize this. And um, then David's son Absalom led a revolt to take over and kicks David out of town. 
well, granddaddy sees a chance now to get back at David. So Ahithophel goes and takes Absalom's side, and David realizes he's in trouble because the wisest man in the kingdom is now helping his son kill David, okay? David's son is Absalom. Absalom is now going to try to kill David. He has the wisest man in the kingdom on his side because David goofed and slept with Bathsheba. Trust me, you guys all know the story of David and Bathsheba. The repercussions of that story go on for three books of the Bible, okay? It's re like all of 2 Samuel is basically David messing up with Bathsheba and all of the repercussions, okay? File that away, don't have an affair, okay? It's really bad. Sorry, I'm getting way off track here. So, Ahithophel says to Absalom, <coughs> chapter 17, straight up to the point, this is what you need to do. Let me choose 12,000 men. I will arise, pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and discouraged. Throw him in panic. All the people who are with him will flee. I will strike down only the king. I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man and all the people will be at peace. That's your story. Go do it. And the advice seemed right in the eyes of Absalom. Then Absalom said, call Hushai. Okay? Now Hushai was working for David. Hushai came to David and said, I'm going to help you, David. I like you. David said, you need to go back and defeat the council of Ahithophel. Okay, this is little little town lawyer going out against a big town lawyer. Ahithophel is the big powerhouse. There's no way to defeat him. Notice what Hushai does. Notice the power of his words. Hushai, verse 6, comes to Absalom. And Absalom says, well, Ahithophel says we need to go kill David now. What do you think? Hushai says to Absalom, you know, just this time, the counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good. You know that your father and his men are mighty men, and they are enraged. In fact, they are like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. Do you see he's painting this picture? In fact, your father is an expert in war. In fact, he will not send the, spend the night with the people. In fact, even now he has hidden himself in one of the pits or some other place. And as soon as some of the people fail at the first attack, whoever hears it will say, there's been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. Then even the valiant man, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will utterly melt with fear. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and that those who are with him are valiant men. But my counsel is that all Israel will be gathered to you, from Dan to Beersheba, from the far north to the far south, as the sand by the sea for multitude, and that you go to battle in person. And then we will should come upon him in some place where he's found. We will light upon him as the dew falls on the ground. And of him and all the men with him, not one will be left. If he withdraws to a city, we'll bring ropes to that city. We'll drag it to the valley. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. Hushai told a story. It was actually a bunch of baloney, because Ahithophel was right. If they would have followed Ahithophel's story, David would have been dead and Absalom would have won. Hushai realized this, and he came in and he said, Let me paint you a story. Your father is a man of hiding. You'd best wait. Build up all the troops and then go and we'll conquer them all at once. By the power of his words, he defeated the council of Ahithophel. And I want to share with you this story to show you that if you will choose your words <coughs> wisely, you can go up against a powerhouse and win. Okay? Keep this in mind in the job. Keep this in mind when you're trying to woo the girl and you're not quite as much of a stud muffin as the guy she's interested. I mean, did you see that? I mean, that was, no offense guys, that was a cheesy poem that you guys read, but what all the girls say after <laughs> You know, the guy, you get those words written, you know, I mean, it had a lot of scripture and it was really pretty cool, but you know, you, you, get, you get those words written, man, you got her, okay? You just go up, I'm your stud muffin, you want to go out with me? No, she's going to deck you. You go up with words, you know? You're beautiful, you're amazing, read some poetry, and you got her, okay? The power of words, that story, I just think that story totally shows the power of words. <laughs>